Hi, Steve here. This is another video in my series on how to create generative art. In this video, we're going to be looking at three functions, return, break, and continue. All three of them are used to stop a process from happening. So first, break. Break breaks you out of a for loop. So here I have a for loop. It's counting from zero to 100, and it's going to print that to the console but if I go greater than 50, then we're going to break. So we're going to stop the for loop. So if I hit go, you'll see that it has counted 0 to 50, and it doesn't continue to 100. That's basically it for break. Notice it doesn't have a parenthesis, so it's not actually a function. It's called a statement. The break, the continue, and the return are all statements. So let's go on to continue. I have an example here. I'll uncomment. Here it says, if i equals 3, then continue. And what continue does is it goes to the next iteration in a for loop. So this is also used in a for loop. So we're going 0, 1, 2, 3. And if it equals 3, then we're going to stop here, go back up to here, and do 4, which means we're not going to print a 3. So let's hit go and check that. And we'll look up here. And sure enough, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. So it skipped 3. So if I had a whole bunch of code after this point, it would not do any of that code. It would just go up to here and start the next iteration. Next, we'll look at return. Return will stop a function and it will return to whatever called that function. So here we have a check number function, and if i is greater than 25, it's going to return. Otherwise, it's going to continue on, and it's going to print i. So I'm getting rid of this print i and bringing in this check num. So we're going through this for loop. It calls the check num. That comes down here. If i is greater than 25, it's going to return. So at that point, it's not going to do this. And it goes back up to here, and it continues with the for loop. And as you can see, it only counted to 25. So that's how return works. But return can do another thing. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of this because I have a return example function. We'll go down to that. So here I have the calculation for Celsius. I'm feeding it a Fahrenheit of 70. Uh, it does a calculation and returns the 21.1 for the Celsius. But let's say I wanted to put this calculation in its own function. So I've done that here. Let's get this out here. So here I'm calling the Celsius function and it's taking this variable, this number 70, putting it in here, and it goes to here. So F2 becomes 70. It goes through this formula. We arrive at 21.1, and then we return 21.1. We return that to where it called from, so here. So then this becomes 21.1, which is equal to C, and then it prints C. So return stops the function and goes back to where the function was called. If there's a value, it will return that value. If there's no value, it just returns and stops the function. I have not used returning a value in my art, but now you know what that is. Let's now look at some practical examples of return, break, and continue. This is my project Traveling Circus or Traveling Circles. What this is is a combination of a flow field and a packing algorithm. So it's trying to fit these lines in, but it's not going to draw on top of lines that already exist. And it's drawing a whole bunch of line segments. So here's a for loop. It's going to attempt to draw 150 line segments, but it's checking a buffer canvas to see if that color on that buffer canvas is black. And if the color on the buffer canvas is black, that means the space is occupied and it's going to break, which means it breaks out of this for loop. It doesn't 
try to continue drawing a line. There's another breakdown here in the same for loop. If it starts to go off the canvas, then it's going to break for that as well. Here's my connected circles algorithm. This is also a packing algorithm with lines that are randomly wandering about the canvas. So if we want to start a new line in this, we call a start circle function. And in the start circle function, it is checking to see if there's space open. So this open variable starts off being true, but then if it becomes false, then we're going to return, which means we're going to stop doing this function and go back. This is a flow packing algorithm, uh, flow field, and also shape packing algorithm. This has an example of both return and continue. So again, I'm using a variable called open. We're in a function right now called check rect. There's calculations being made and either the space is available which means open is true, or the space is not available, which means open is false. If open is false, then it's going to return, which means it stops this function and goes back to whatever called this function. Here's a for loop with i, and this tries is how many times is it gonna try to place a shape? So it might be 20,000 attempts to place a shape. So it tries to place a shape, it picks a random location, and it checks to see if that space is available. If the space is available, then it draws the shape. If the space is not available, it gets open equals false, and then this continue happens. And as soon as that continue happens, it goes back to this for loop, and it goes to the next iteration of i. One more example I wanna share with you. This is a circle packing algorithm. I'm gonna share this code with you. When I'm checking to see if the space is available, there are nine spots that I'm checking. I'm checking the center of the circle, then I'm checking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots around the circle. Now I could grab all nine of those locations and check all of them with one big if statement, but that would be inefficient because what if the first spot I check is occupied, then it shouldn't draw a circle there, so it should return right away. If I check all nine of those spots, then I'm doing eight checks that are unnecessary. I'm also, uh, instead of checking one, two, three, four, five, I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, and then I do six, seven, eight, nine. And that's again for some efficiency because if the circle can't be drawn over here, I don't want to check this spot and this spot. So a little bonus for you today about circle packing and a short video for today. In the next video, we're going to be returning to color and the CSV table. Uh, I want to take a deeper dive into color now that you know a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't know before. If you liked the video, you can give it a like. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. Bye.